With new iPhones comes new features, and for 2022 that comes in the form of iOS 16 running on the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro. While we're sure you've got to grips with some of the big new features by now, there's still plenty in here to go looking for to help make life a bit better. I'm Cam Bunton from PocketLint, and in this video I'm going to show you some of my favourite tips, tricks and features to try on your new iPhone. And if you have an older model running iOS 16, some of these will work for you as well. If you do like it, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. So first up is turning off the always on display and this one obviously is for the iPhone 14 Pro only. The iPhone 14 Pro has an always on display feature that dims the wallpaper and highlights the clock. It's enabled by default, but you may find it's not that useful for yourself or that it drains your battery. So if you want to turn it off, you can. Open settings, tap display and brightness and now toggle off the always on option. Simple. But if you don't want it off all the time and you just want it to go off at night time, you can do that too. You can set it up to switch off at night time as part of sleep mode. So go to settings, focus and sleep. And here you can schedule a sleep focus to activate at a set time each night under the schedule tab. When it activates, your always on display will no longer show at night time. Number two is enabling the haptic keyboard. As part of iOS 16, Apple brought haptic feedback to its own stock keyboard. Finally, this means that when you type, you can feel subtle taps or vibrations under the display. For me, it's an absolute essential feature that should have existed a long time ago. To switch it on, just go to settings, sound and haptics, and then choose keyboard feedback and toggle on the haptic option. Number three is another one that should have arguably existed a long time ago, and it's battery percentage indicator. So as we mentioned in our iOS 16 video previously, there's now a battery percentage indicator that you can enable to show the actual percentage in the battery icon in your status bar. To activate it, just go to settings, battery, and toggle on the battery percentage option. Number four is changing your notification style. So by default in iOS 16, it now shows a number or a count of notifications at the bottom of your lock screen when you have some waiting. But you can change this to be a list of actual notifications or a stack of notification windows. Just open settings, notifications, and choose one of the other two options at the top of the screen under display as. Number five is locking a note behind your device's passcode or face ID unlock. So in notes now you can lock a specific note behind a face ID authentication. You're no longer limited to just locking it behind your phone's passcode or your password. To enable this feature, go to settings, notes, and now find the password option and tap that. On the next screen, select use device passcode option and then toggle on use face ID. Now you don't have to use a specific password to unlock your notes. Now to lock a specific note, just long press on the note that you want to lock within the app and then hit lock note on the pop-up menu that appears. Next time you try to open it, it'll use Face ID to check that it's you trying to access it. Next is editing or unsending messages. Now sometimes when you message, you may find that you A, regret it immediately or B, find a typo in it that you want to fix or maybe both. Thankfully in iOS 16 there's a solution to those problems. You can unsend or edit messages now. So open messages, type your message as normal, and now once you've sent it you long press that message. You'll see both edit and undo send as options in the drop down menu. Choose whichever you want to use at that time, but be warned if the person you're sending it to doesn't have iOS 16 it won't appear as unsent for them, they'll still see the original message. Next up is deleting duplicate photos. Now Apple's latest photos app lets you quickly and easily delete duplicate photos, which is great because it's a really handy built in way to stop you from wasting storage. So to save space you can delete those extras, just open photos and tap on albums. Scroll all the way down until you see duplicates in the list near the bottom of the page. Now you can either hit merge near each match or hit select at the top and then manually choose each image you want to delete and hit the delete trash can icon at the bottom. Another photos tip is the ability to quickly cut or copy and paste subjects from the background into another document. So one of the cool new iOS 16 features is the ability to remove subjects from their photo backgrounds and then share them in any app as a cutout. With the right technique, you can quickly drag and drop it to another document or onto an image you might be working on in apps like Photoshop or Pages or something similar. Just tap and hold the subject as normal to remove it from the background. Now keep hold of it with that same finger and use your other hand to swipe out of the app and open the one that you want to drop it into. So for instance, if it's Pages, just open that, create a new document or open an existing one, and then just drop in the image. As we also showed in our iOS 16 video, if you want to share them another way, you can just tap and hold on the subject and wait for that white line to appear around it, 
and then tap share and choose where you want to share it or copy and open the app manually to paste it in. Next is shooting with a full 48 megapixel sensor. So this is another feature that's only available on the iPhone 14 Pro models and it's shooting at 48 megapixels using the full number of pixels available on the main camera sensor. Go to settings, camera and select formats at the top of the list. Toggle on the Apple Pro RAW option and underneath that select the resolution and ensure that 48 megapixels is chosen. Now when you open the camera app you'll see a RAW toggle at the top of the screen. Just tap it to enable the full 48 megapixel RAW shot and take a photo. Number 9 is along a similar note and it's manually switching the macro mode on and off. So another useful one is the manual macro mode switch because for the past couple of phone generations the auto switching between one times and macro can be a bit jarring. Open settings and camera again and now just toggle on the macro control switch. Open the camera app and move your camera close to an object and you should see the macro logo appear in yellow on the screen. It's enabled by default but if you want to disable it just tap the logo when it appears. Our next tip is quite an interesting one and it's personalizing your spatial audio experience. So with iOS 16 there's an interesting feature that uses the front facing face ID depth sensors to personalize your spatial audio in your AirPods. To use it just open your AirPods case and make sure they're connected and then open the settings app. Tap on the AirPods in the list and then in the next screen find personalized spatial audio and then tap personalize spatial audio on the following screen. Now it'll take you through a process where it uses the front facing depth sensors to measure your face and your ears and then use that data to build a spatial audio profile that works for you when you have your AirPods connected. Number 11 is really handy and it's seeing the Wi-Fi password for the network that you're connected to. One feature that arguably again should have existed for a long time is the ability to see the password for the network you're connected to. In iOS 16 you can. Just open settings and tap Wi-Fi and then tap the info icon next to the network that you're connected to. On the next screen you'll see password. Tap it and it'll use Face ID to check that it's you and then reveal the password. Number 12 is adding stops to your Apple Maps navigation. In Apple Maps in iOS 16 you can add additional stops along the way to your end destination. Just go to navigate as usual putting in your desired endpoint into Maps and then hit the drive icon. Before you start the turn by turn navigation you'll now see a list beneath directions where you can hit add stop. So tap that and add in the locations that you want to go through and then reorder those stops so that they're in the correct order. Now hit the go button to start navigating with your stops on the way already included. Next is quick note. So iOS has a feature called quick note that lets you unsurprisingly quickly start writing a note in the notes app. Just drop down control center and find the control that looks like a note page and a plus icon. Tap it and you'll immediately start a new note in the notes app. So now it's time for a couple of my favorite features that have been brought from older versions of iOS but still very useful. First up as always is back tapping to screenshot or shazamming. So there's a cool trick that lets you tap twice or three times on the back of your iPhone to perform actions like taking a screenshot or dropping down notifications or quickly shazamming a track. And it's actually part of the accessibility settings. So open settings, accessibility and now find touch. At the bottom of the next screen you'll find back tap. Select double tap and choose screenshot from the list or any other function you might want. You can also select triple tap and then set it to do something else. For instance I use it for shazamming music so that I don't have to go hunting for the app. Now when you tap twice or three times on the phone's rear it'll take a screenshot or perform whatever other function you've set it up to do. Number 15 is typing to Siri. So another accessibility tool for those who might find it difficult to speak or listen is the ability to type Siri requests. But first you have to enable it. So open settings, accessibility again and find Siri near the bottom. On the next screen just toggle on type to Siri. And now when you launch Siri by pressing and holding the side key you can type requests and then see the responses on the screen. And lastly it's one handed mode. So there's a feature in iOS that lets you reach the top of the screen easier with one hand or more technically your thumb. It's called reachability and when active all you have to do is swipe downwards at the bottom of the screen and it'll bring down the top half of the screen to make it more easy to reach. So just open settings, accessibility, touch and toggle on reachability. So there you go, 16 useful features and tips for you to try on your latest iPhones. Let me know if you found any of these useful in the comments down below or grab me on Twitter. I'm at Cam Bunton. If you did like it please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.